Today, I thought I would show you the first stage of the swarm of AI agent workers concept I have been working on for a while. So basically, today we are going to look at how I use this UI you can see in the background here to collect data on a set topic. Uh, we're also going to look at how this is going to work conceptually moving forward. So we're going to integrate like the brain. You can see the flow chart in the background here. We're going to take a look at that and how this brain can make decisions and call out these agents that can work on the data we are collecting. Uh, I think it's better if I just explain it like in a step by step way in the flow chart. So let's take a look. Okay, so I'm gonna try to explain this flowchart as simple as possible. Basically, the first thing we have to do is use our UI that I have created to enter a research topic. I think today we're just gonna search for GPT vision use cases. And from that, we have some kind of data collection set up here. It's not agents, but it's kind of automation. So we take the search query we put in, right? We go to Google. We search for that, we scrape the links, we save it to a JSON file. We do the same on YouTube, we put the search query onto YouTube, we download the videos, maybe like the top three results, you can set that yourself. And all of this data is going to be converted into JSON and it's going to be dumped into an Azure storage. Uh, I thought I would be easier if we want to fully automate this, it would be better to have it in the cloud than on our local computer. So that is how far we are going to take a look at today. So basically this is stage one. Uh, coming up, it's going to be creating the brain. So this is going to be like a master agent with a goal. Uh, this could be example, create a blog post. So this means that we will have to download the data we have. And this agent here is going to assign work to these different agents. So these are just examples. So it could be a summary agent, a writer agent an SEO agent, a value evaluation agent. Uh, I have the outreach agents almost complete. So I think we're going to take a quick look at them today too. Uh, so the plan here is like, uh, let's say the master agent decide to send the data. Uh, it already has the overarching goal, right? So it's going to send the data to the summary agent. It's going to summarize it and send it back. And maybe it can evaluate this by using the evaluation agents. And if it's happy with that, it can send it to the writer agents. So that is basically the next step we're going to do. And when that is complete, hopefully we'll get a final output that is aligned with our overarching goal of creating a blog post. Uh, so basically, I hope you understood this. It's pretty simple, like in theory, uh, but we will really get it to work in practice. That we just have to remain to see how that goes. Uh, but now I think we're just going to head over and start looking at stage one. Of this workflow. Okay, so how stage one works on the back end is pretty simple actually. We just have a Flask app here. We have an HTML for the UI, right? And we have two of these kind of data collection agents. It's not agents, but it's kind of a way to collect data. So in the first, we use SERP API to use Google search. So we can put a query in, uh, like I said, in the UI. And it can go to Google and search and scrape the results. So we have a scrape website function. We have a get organic result function. And all of this is going to be downloaded, turn into JSON, right? And it's going to be uploaded to Azure. So we have this execute news agent. I've just called it that just for fun, right? <laughs> uh, and it's going to save it as news.json uh, on Azure. So we're going to take a look at how those result will look when we have run it. Uh, on the other side, we have this YouTube agent. It's pretty much the same, but it has to go uh, to a few more steps. We have to use Whisper among that, and we have to use PyTube and to turn it into an MP3 file. So we have like open and save. So we have save JSON, convert to JSON, and we have upload to Azure. We have yeah, ChatGPT, we have download the YouTube video, convert it to MP3. We have a way to search the YouTube videos and to get the transcripts from the audio. So for this, we use Whisper. That works very good. Uh, but we have to chunk it. So we chunk it into 10 minutes chunks and transfer that to text. And then this execute YouTube agent, turn it into JSON and uploads it to our Azure blob storage under the name transcript.json. So that is basically it. I think we're just going to run it and we can take a look at some results, what we get back. So yeah, I think we're just going to do that. So let's just run flask app2.py here. 
we will get like this address so we can just open this and here we can enter our query, right? Uh, I don't have any login on stuff here now, so we're just gonna look at the backend when this is complete. So let's do GPT vision uh, use cases. Let's say we wanted to make a post about that. We need some information or data. Okay, so just hit enter. Uh, my plan is to create like a log here on the UI, but for now, I think we're just gonna look at this to see what happens, right? A bit smaller like this okay hopefully you can see this now so the first thing you can see the uh, scrape news from Google is already complete that's uploaded to our Azure Bob here so let's update that just to see yes we have our JSON file here so if we go back here now we can see that we are now downloading the mp3 file from the YouTube results, that's done. So the next thing is to do that into chunks and we're gonna transcribe it with Whisper and turn it into text, then convert it into JSON. Okay, so we actually get a message here. You can say both scripts executed successfully, so we can just click OK. That means that we are finished with this UI. So we can head back over to Azure, we can update, and hopefully we have both JSON files here now. Yeah, that's good. So let's take a look at what's exactly are inside of these JSON files now. Okay, so here you can see what's inside of news.json. So we get article one, we get the URL that we actually scraped. I like that the structure. And here are all the text, right? Uh, it looks a bit weird, but uh, that, this, that's not the point. We have a URL from newsweek.com. 10 wild whales people are using ChatGPT's new vision feature. So you can see it's working. We actually get those articles we want for the information for our blog post. And we have the scrape data here. And for article 3, we have multimodal chat GPT voice vision images. A new multimodal capability of ChatGPT. Okay, so that's some good data too. Uh, we can also set how many articles we want to scrape. So I put this to 3 now, but I think we can have up to 10. Uh, and on the transcript, uh, you can see basically this is just one big text of all the words that were said in the YouTube video we scraped. And yeah, so this is transcribed by Whisper. So, But I think I have some bit of work to do on the how we should actually search YouTube to get the best results, but that's for another time. Uh, but yeah, basically, now we got our data, and you can see we have them in here. So when we create the, how should I call it, the master brain, we can easily download these dumped JSON files from Azure to start working on the data and process it with my worker agents so that's gonna be exciting but that's from another video i think i'm just gonna show you like an example of my uh, outreach agents and how they are working uh, at the moment so the outreach agents are a bit different uh, we use many of the same uh, things here we use the google search we use scrape website because we want to be able to look at websites and get information from those sites right uh, we have some different functions here. Uh, we don't use all of them. Of course, we use ChatGPT and we use the function parts. We can set up functions here in ChatGPT, right? If you haven't looked at that before. We're going to use the GPT-40613 model to get better system prompts. We have a sleep delay here, so we don't run into any rate limits. And yeah, you can see we use function calling here. And other than that, it's nothing special. We have two agents. We have a leader agent and a data agent that is gonna cooperate to find outreach e email addresses in this case. So let's take a look at the instructions. So the one instruction is data agents, is an expert in data analysis with proficiency in online research and excellent communication skills. So I give these agents like the ability to execute functions since we use function calling, right? So your main functions include uh, get organic results, scrape URLs, save and open files. So we're always going to follow instructions from leader agent. That is going to be kind of the boss of the data agent. So the instructions is to always follow the instructions from leader agents, focus on the task and do your best. And uh, Always do this. After you have saved an email address to epost.txt, always respond with email address is saved. Let's move on. 
And the leader agent is an expert leader and coordinator. You have the ability to give instructions, but you can't execute functions. I only want one agent to execute functions because sometimes even if I said that, it doesn't always apply. So you're going to instruct data agents to find contact information, email addresses to marketing companies in Oslo, Norway. Use a search query avoids the top lists of companies. I found that very annoying. So we're gonna uh, give an example here of like marketing compass in Oslo site uh, at dot no that works much better I found out. So we need names of companies so we can find the content info. Always ask if you can save the email addresses when you don't find any email addresses and the query marketing compass in Oslo move on to a similar white collar business category. So what I found out here is like if you can't find any marketing companies anymore. We can just move on to, let's say, lawyer firms in Oslo to find more email addresses if we need that. And yeah, that's basically the setup for the outreach agent. So let's test them and see if we can gather some email addresses. Okay, so I'm going to run this now. So we're just going to let it run for a while and come back and see if we have any results. Okay, so I think that was enough. This already proves that this is working very good. So you can see, okay, I'm data agent, ready to start my assignment. And here you can see the leader agent gives like the instructions we put up to the, the data agent. You can see it goes ahead, types in the search query, market companies in Oslo, Norway. It finds a whole bunch of uh, addresses here. We can scrape URLs. So you can see if there's a, okay, I know this is digital marketing agency, so that's good. It's on point, right? And you can see now proceed extracting contact information from these websites. Start with the first link. So it gives instructions to scrape like the first link we found here. Perfect. Uh, remember, we are looking for email addresses. And you can see task one in progress, scraping websites for contact information. So it looks at these sites, finds these two email addresses, even finds the phone numbers, but we are not collecting that now. Uh, great job, we have found two email addresses. Uh, execute the functions to save file. Epos.txt contents are gonna be those two email addresses. Uh, task one in progress, saving the first. Okay, so it was saved. Well done. Let's move on to the second website. So you can see it just does that. Move on to the second. So we can just keep this going in like a. It's basically a loop, right? And here it scrapes the second website we found, right? Remember that up here. And it looks at uh, the results here. Found this email. Uh, great, we found another email address, save it, uh, so we saved that to file, great work, let's continue with the third website, and here I just stopped it, so if we look at the results here, you can see we have those three email addresses, so I, I think this could be a great way to just set a target of what kind of contact information you want, let it run, or this could be initiated by like a query from the master brain, look for outreach we can do in this and this topic right so i'm gonna explore this more i think i'm gonna find a way to integrate this but that will be in another video so yeah this is pretty cool right i found it very interesting and it's gonna just get better as we go on right so yeah that is basically how far i have come so far uh, nothing else to say uh, it's gonna be interesting to see where we end up with this project uh, over the next week i'm gonna probably be working more on the master brain to see if we can do some decision prompts that can actually uh, instruct agents to do work, get the results back and go back and forward and try to end up with like an overarching goal and get an output based on that. So if you found this interesting, I'm gonna probably be uploading this to my membership here on YouTube. So if you wanna get access, you can join and you will get access to the GitHub so you can download this and try it out for yourself. Uh, so yeah. Thank you for tuning in, have a great day and I'll see you again soon.